Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we picked up some fruit trees and we're building. We're finally starting our orchard and it looks like we're starting to plant things um, in our garden and I'm really excited about it and I wanted to share this journey with you. So I have through the journey of um, not having a financial stability and going broke I started gardening for other people and even though I was kind of like eh about gardening before although I did like gardening food one one intention that I set for myself was that I want to love gardening and that has happened through the gardening work that I had and intentions are so powerful always set intentions that's been the biggest lesson like I kind of understood it on a intellectual level before but in the past I think maybe six months I've been really intentionally setting intentions and everything comes true when I set an intention just things come true it's just pure magic I love it so that's on a different note um, it's kind of like putting out your desire out to the universe and things just tend to align anyway enough about that I have gotten really into gardening and <clears throat> I'm currently in the stage of gardening where I steal little cuttings of plants from different areas that I can find them that I think they'll grow and I've been making little plants growing them and it's just been so exciting seeing them grow so I have a table full of them and one of my goals is to have a little shade house and a little nursery for my plants so I can sell them. We're gonna have a stall out the front of our house down the road and just sell plants and honey and um, just any goods that we make on the farm. So that is one of, one of the goals for the farm is creating plants, creating beautiful gardens, growing lots of food, selling the food as well. And yeah, it's just really exciting. So Nat is currently down there. I don't know if you can see him working hard. He's right down there. And today we went to the nursery and we bought two banana trees, a lemon, an orange, a lime, three avocado seedlings, blueberries, and chilies. So that's kind of what we're starting with. And just around in the backyard of the house, we have another garden. Um, so the idea is to get the, all of our soil is in that back paddock. We had a whole heap of soil delivered about a year ago, I think, um, thinking that we were going to do a whole thing back there, which we are, but we also need the soil for our backyard garden. Um, so it's been really hard pushing a wheelbarrow of soil up this little hill up here, um, up into the backyard. So our neighbors gave us a broken down ride on mower and Nat is fixing that up now. So once that's going, we can use the ride on mower to get the soil from the back and to just get our garden set up. And it's so exciting, so, so, so exciting. So I'm really looking forward to that, but let's go and see what we're doing today. done a little bit more work here mm. today my love mm -hmm. show us yeah. what you've done uh, I've got this swale system here that will help slow the water runoff because it's on a slope uh-huh um, I've just squeezed in a short little raised bed there that's uh, parsley oregano and coriander okay you want coriander and a couple flowers just to get them established to attract the pollinators and I've got one row of chilies all the, all the jalapenos except the, the biggest ones, bird's eye. And then we've got 
a path here so we can get in harvest and then the next road, which is carrots. Oh. We've got carrots in. We've wow. Got some root vegetables um, every every second row. And we've got the blueberries down there and so yeah. We'll continue this pattern of chilies and then a row of rotational crops. Um, and we continue that down to the blueberries and then down there. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. It'll help improve the soil and improve the land here. Cool. By slowing the water down, the water will get deeper into the table instead of rushing off the top and taking all the soil with it. Okay. So yeah. This just this little zone alone will open up everything in this plot. Yeah. Just with the water retention alone. Awesome. Yeah. And we have avocados back there, bananas. You replanted a new banana as well yeah, today. Four now instead of two. Woohoo! Yeah. Awesome. So yeah. exciting. Okay, let's take this guy. I met the previous owner of this place recently and she said that in this spot was a beautiful lemon tree that was super prolific. So I was like, ah, oh, I think we're going to have to buy a lemon tree for this spot. So here's a lemon tree and it's going to hopefully be as prolific as hers was. <laughs> battery ran out so I wasn't able to show what we did but in this corner I planted some parsley and coriander so finally a little bit of action was happening in our garden and then in this corner I planted the lemon tree which is really exciting it's all nicely mulched now so it should grow really nicely. Mulching, mulching trees and plants is really important just to help retain moisture around them as well. So in case you didn't know, but I got some compost, put a bit of compost in the, in the hole for it, um, then mulched it afterwards. So hopefully it'll be a very happy little lemon tree. I also took the goats for a walk, which you missed. So a lot of, a lot of stuff has been happening and Nat's just finished planting all those plants in the corner there. The goats are happy. They've had a nice feed on foods that are not in, in their paddock. Goats are browsers, so they like to pick at lots of different things at once. Hey, Jag, are you happy, buddy? Yeah. Now I've got to put the rabbits to bed. So we current, currently have five rabbits. There's little Miss Butterball. Her mama Mindy is sitting up there. We'll put her to bed. Hey mama. Hi, they have a bed. Good girl. We also have to make sure that all of our cages are completely snake proof because we've had a lot of snakes this summer <sighs> lost a lot of chickens so it would be really sad to lose a rabbit so here's one little boy he's such a sweetheart i love him And here's the other little boy. Mm, so sweet. He's such 
sweet little babies. So let's talk about food. I am super passionate about good food and I've had quite an inter- <laughs> I always say that. I always say it. I've had quite an interesting journey with this. Anyway, I've had a long journey with food and nutrition. I haven't always been healthy, although I was raised by a mother who was super into health and making sure that we ate really good food. Even though she had no money and sometimes she went hungry herself, she would make sure that she went to the markets and somehow found ways to get us the most nutritious food, fruits and vegetables, um, so that we could eat them. And that the principle of good nutrition and eating right was really drummed into us from childhood, which I'm very grateful for because I fell off the wagon for a quite a long time. Once I left home, I was like, woohoo, I can eat whatever I want. I'm an adult now. I can do whatever I want. And then down the line, I realized that certain foods weren't making me feel very good versus other foods that did make me feel good. And food affects our gut bacteria, the microbiome, uh, which affects our mood and our mental health. And it affects our consciousness. The better quality food that we eat, the, the higher quality consciousness we have. Hello, plane. And we live in a world today where quality of food isn't as important as profits. So our modern society has now created technologies that can grow food quickly but leaves the soil barren uh, without any micro microbes in it without it being alive um, and it's all it doesn't work with nature it's all monoculture so there's no diversity in plants it's not working with the bugs and the insects and bringing them all in there's things like glyphosate being used on food which has such horrendous negative effects on our health um, and other sprays and it's just really it's a absolute crime what is happening to our food system these days even though you know countries can grow certain foods they'll import foods from across the world which means that foods aren't as fresh and even the BBC reported that foods are 38% less nutritious these days than when they were in the 20th century let me just double check that less nutrient rich than in the mid 20th century which is crazy absolute craziness so while technological advancements may have figured out how to feed people on a mass scale the food that we're eating is so much less nutritious. We actually probably need to be eating more of it in order to get the same amount that we would have gotten from the denser nutrient foods in the past. So that's why I'm really passionate about food and I've been really experimenting with my diet over the past few years. It's you know, once I started to become more conscious of health when I was a young adult, I started experimenting with different foods um, and slowly kind of over time, my taste buds would change and would prefer the higher quality foods rather than the ultra processed foods that I was eating at that stage. So I've been training my taste buds and my body has been craving higher quality foods as well. And especially lately, I've been playing around with going, how can I really optimize my health? And I'm also thinking, okay, if food is medicine, how can I really hone in on the medicinal part of food? what kind of nutrients nutrient dense foods make me feel the best provide me with the most energy 
make me feel good in my body you know might heal some su certain symptoms that i might have and i've been really focusing on that so i'm really really excited about growing our own food and our own orchard i think these days knowing where your food comes from is absolutely vital especially meat um because i mean we know what happened with the covid vaccines they were an absolute fail and have destroyed so many people's lives injured so many people and have altered people's dna um and now they're looking to inject those that same mrna technology into animals and the food that we eat so we are what we eat and that's why I'm really passionate about growing and raising our own food. And I think this is a really important area of our lives where we have the opportunity to take our power back, starting with small steps. You know, if you, if you don't have land, then what can you do in an apartment or with a, the tiny little land that you have or working with your community and your neighbors in order to start really taking responsibility for your health and the foods that we put into and the foods that you put into your body and start growing your own foods you know whether it's growing some tomato plants on a balcony or some herbs on your window seal starting with that and really starting to pay attention where your foods are coming from what are you feeding those plants what a healthy plant looks like what an organic plant looks like versus a non-organic plant for example my mum once told me um, she gave me a bunch of greens from her garden and they had holes in them uh, from bugs eating them and I was like oh holes in them I don't want those and she's like this means that they're organic the bugs actually want to eat them and I was like wow okay that makes sense and now I look for whole you know foods that have holes in them because if the bugs are wanting to eat them that means that that's probably good for me as well if you live in a city I highly recommend getting this book so that you can learn how you can be self-sufficient in a city environment or in a suburban environment this is the book for you so the plan with our farm is to obviously raise our own meat down the line but now we're focusing on the orchard and it's been a slog you know in the previous videos i've told told you about my financial struggles and i'm slowly my me and my partner are slowly getting our um way out of that and part of our self-sufficiency journey is to purchase plants and fruit trees and herbs and seeds whenever we can whenever we can afford it um you know my partner got some money recently so he bought a few trees for the orchard and this is going to pay us back in the future because if we don't have to buy foods from the shops because we're growing our own we're going to save money in the long run so it's just little steps we're taking little tiny steps in order to build the future that we really envision that we desire of self-sufficiency not relying on governments to tell us what we should and shouldn't be doing with our health not giving our power away you know our health is our wealth without our health what do we have nothing i've worked as a nurse in a hospital before and it's seeing people in states of not being well in their bodies they don't have much to do with it with the rest of their lives it's it's not a good place to be in so I'm trying to work on being as healthy as possible for as long as possible, taking responsibility for my health. And I encourage you to do the same. You know, it's not really about what your body looks like in terms of, you know, the mainstream of just vanity. This is about health pure health what are we putting into our bodies how is this affecting our mood our mental health our consciousness how is this affecting our physical abilities how is this affecting our energy um so that's what i'm really really interested in and i think how we look is a byproduct of how we feel in our bodies as well you know a person that is properly nourished 
that is healthy from the inside out is going to be far more radiant and attractive than someone that isn't. So that is that is something, that is what I pay attention to, how I'm feeling in my body um, rather than how my body looks from a vanity perspective. I just feel like that all kind of falls in into place um, once we're looking after ourselves and what we're eating, um, how we're moving our bodies and how we're feeling within our bodies. And our body also guides us towards feeling good. It, our, bodies, our body's sole purpose is to help us live and thrive in this world. And it's always sending us messages on what feels right, what doesn't feel right, um, and what feels good to put into our bodies, what doesn't feel good. Right now I have sinus issues which I feel are gut related, so whenever I eat something that inflames my gut, I'm not able to breathe properly and that's a good message from my body letting me know that that food isn't suitable for me at this point in time and that there is something that I need to resolve in my gut whether it is candida or leaky gut or anything else but I'm listening very carefully to my body right now and allowing it to guide me to healing and to the greatest well-being that I can possibly have. So that is it for today's video. I just wanted to hopefully inspire you to take some time to plant some food. Take that responsibility for yourself and get to know where your food is coming from. This is such an important area for us to focus on, especially going into a world of uncertainty and being in a world of uncertainty. We don't know which way the world is going to go. Um, but the more that people take power back into their hands, the less we have to rely on governments and people of authority to tell us what we need to be doing or what we should be doing. So just kind of um, sitting with that and I hope I haven't mumbled too much. I'm very premenstrual at the moment and my head feels a bit all over the place and I'm a little bit tired because I went to sleep way too late last night. So naughty me um, and this is a hide that I'm working on I'm learning to tan hides in the previous vid video I showed you how we skin some goats and this is the hide that's just here drying out now and um, yeah I'm excited to learn more about this beautiful ancient skill of hide tanning and show you how it all goes moving forward if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, invite them over, let's create an awesome community here, and da 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 da, what else? Stay wild! See ya!